Hi, Matthew here. I'm going to talk you through this Leaving Cert Maths question. It's challenging, but hopefully with my help, you'll be able to understand and answer the question. So let's get started. Question 10, which is a 50 mark question on trigonometry, calculus, functions, and logarithms. So question 10, part A, tells us that a right angle triangle, OAB, was drawn within a parabola, as shown in the diagram below. They've also shown us three possible triangles that AOB could have been. The point O is the origin, which is 0, 0, and A can lie anywhere on this parabola above the x-axis. We're given the equation of the parabola, and that's y is equal to px minus x squared, where p is a positive constant. So let's have a look at A part 1, and this is worth 5 marks. So this wants us to show that the area of the triangle OAB can be represented by half times by px squared minus x cubed. So remember, the formula for the triangle is half times the base times the height. So now we just have to work out the base and the height. So the base is going to be along the x-axis. So for example, if a is here, then the base is going to be from the origin to this b here. And this is just going to be the x value. So whatever the x coordinate of a is, then that will be the base. Similarly, if the a is here, the x coordinate will be whatever x coordinate is here. And the base again will just be equal to the x coordinate. And the same thing will happen if a is the third a there along on the parabola right here. So basically, x will just be the base. So whatever the x coordinate is of a, then that's the base of the triangle. So let's write that down. And now that we have our base, we now have to find the height. And now if you notice something, a will always be on the parabola, so either there, there, or there. So as a result, we can say that the perpendicular height will be of the form px minus x squared, depending on whatever x is, as it is always on the parabola. So therefore, as I said, h is equal to px minus x squared. So now let's pop these into the formula, and we should get half times by px squared minus x cubed. So we get a half times by x by px, and x by px is px squared, and x by minus x squared is minus x cubed. So therefore, we've shown that the area of the triangle AOB can be written as half times by px squared minus x cubed and now we're going to move on to a part two which is worth 15 marks so this wants us to find in terms of p the maximum possible area of triangle oab so remember from a part one we can say that the area is equal to half times by px squared minus x cubed so to find the maximum possible area of triangle aob i'm going to differentiate the area with respect to x and put that equal to zero so i'm going to let a represent the area and then multiply out the bracket so it's going to be a is equal to half px squared minus half x cubed so now differentiate half px squared minus half x cubed. Remember, if we have a term, x to the power of n. Differentiating that, we'll get n times by x to the power of n minus 1. So then differentiating a half px squared, we're going to get 2 over 2 px to the power of 2 minus 1, which is going to be just px. And then differentiating minus a half x cubed, we're going to get minus 3 over 2 x to the power of 3 minus 1, which is going to be minus 3 over 2 x squared. So now we have to put this equal to 0 and solve for x. Then we're going to find the x coordinate of the maximum possible area of the triangle. So we're going to factorize this, we're going to take x outside of p minus 3 over 2x, so that gives us x is equal to 0, and then p minus 3 over 2x equal to 0. So x equal to 0 is the minimum area, so now we have to solve for x on the right hand side to find the maximum area. That's going to be p is equal to 3 over 2x, multiply both sides by 2. This will get rid of the fraction on the right hand side, and I'll get 2p is equal to 3x. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That will get rid of the 3 on the right hand side and I'll get 2p over 3 is equal to x. So this is the x value for the maximum area in terms of p. But we're not done here. This is the x coordinate and remember we need to find the corresponding y coordinate. So to do that I'm going to put this back into the original function. So the area was equal to half times by px squared minus x cubed. So now it's going to be half times by p times by 2p over 3 squared minus 2p over 3 cubed. So that's going to give us a half outside of p and then 2p over 3 squared. So that's the same thing as 2p squared over 3 squared which is going to be 4p squared over 9 and minus one that's going to be 2p over 3 squared it's the same thing as 2p cubed over 3 cubed which is going to be 8p cubed over 27 and multiplying this out even more we get a half outside of 4p cubed over 9 minus 8p cubed over 27 so now i'm going to write both of them with the same denominator so that i can take them away from each other it's going to be a half outside of 12p cubed over 27 minus 8p cubed over 27 so it's going to be a half times by 4p cubed over 27 which is equal to 2p cubed over 27 and that's going to give us 2p cubed over 27 square units and that's our answer for A part 2. So now let's have a look at A part 3. And this is worth 10 marks. So now we're told that for the triangle AOB, the length of the base of the triangle X is increasing at a rate of P over 10 units per second. We now have to find the rate of change of the area of the triangle AOB at the moment when the base length X is P over 2. 
So the rate of change at the area is going to be given as dA dt. This is what we want to try and find. So using the chain rule, we're going to say that that's going to be equal to dA over something multiplied by that same something over dt. Now we're told that the length of the base of the triangle is increasing at a rate of p over 10 units per second. So the rate of change of the length of the base is going to be given by dx dt. So basically we can say that dx dt is equal to p over 10. So I'm going to use dx over dt here on the right hand side. And as we have dx up here, we must have dx also down here. So that means that dA dt is equal to dA dx by dx dt. So we have dx dt, that's p over 10, and we worked out dA dx in a part two of the question, and that was px minus three over two x squared. So now let's multiply these out. So then we get p squared x over 10 minus three p x squared over 20. But remember, we're told that x is equal to p over two, which gives us dA dt is equal to p squared times p over two over 10 minus three p times p over two squared over 20. And that gives us p cubed over 20 minus three p cubed cubed over 80 and now to take the 3p cubed over 80 away from the p cubed over 20 I'm going to put them both over the same denominator so that's going to be 4p cubed over 80 minus 3p cubed over 80 which leaves me with dA dt is equal to p cubed over 80 which leaves me with dA dt is equal to p cubed over 80 units squared per second so that's our answer for a part 3 which is the final part of a and now we're going to move on to part b which is the logarithm part of the question so part b tells us that the intensity i lowercase t measured in candle power of light is reduced as it passes through a filter according to the law i lowercase t is equal to i lowercase 0 e to the power of minus kt where i lowercase 0 is the initial intensity and i lowercase t is the intensity after passing through a filter of thickness t centimeters k is a constant and a constant just means it stays the same every time no matter what so then b part one is worth 10 marks and it tells us that a filter of thickness four centimeters reduces the intensity from 120 candle power to 90 candle power we now have to show that k is equal to 0 0.0719 so it originally it was 120 and then it fell to 90. So that means that I0 is 120 and that IT is 90. We know that T is 4 as the thickness was 4. And now we have to solve for K. So that's going to be 90 is equal to 120 E to the power of minus K4. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 120. And that will give me 3 over 4 is equal to E to the power of minus K4. Now remember, whenever there's a variable in the exponent up here, we must use the logarithms to take it down from the exponent. So we have a rule and it's this rule here we're going to use. So when you have the log of some number x to the power of q, that's equal to q times by log of that number x. So in our case here, we have e to the power of minus k4. So if I do ln of e to the power of minus k4, we can say that that's equal to minus k4 of ln e. So we're going to use this rule now to bring the variable down from the exponent. However, we must put the ln in on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, so be careful there. So that's going to give us ln 3 over 4 is equal to minus 4k ln e. So now let's see what ln of 3 over 4 gives us. So it's minus 0 0.28768207.25. And now let's do ln of e. That's just one, which means that the right hand side is just equal to minus 4k. So now I'm gonna divide both sides by minus 4k. So that gives me 0 0.0719201813. Correct to four decimal places, that's 0 0.0719 which is exactly what we had to show k was equal to. So there we've shown that k is equal to 0 0.0719. That's our answer for a part one. So now we're going to have a look at a part two, and this is worth five marks. So we're told that a filter of thickness t centimeters reduces the intensity from 180 candle power to 60 candle power. We now have to find the value of t correct to one decimal place. So let's remember our law, and that's it is equal to i0 times by e to the power of minus kt. So the 180 is going to be our i0, and then the 60 is going to be it. We already have k, that's equal to 0 0.0719, and we need to work out t. So let's pop these into the formula now, and let's see what we get. So that's 60 is equal to 180e to the power of minus 0.0719t. So I'm going to divide both sides by 180, and that gives me 1 over 3 is equal to e to the power of minus 0.0719t. And using the same reasoning as in a part 1, I'm going to put ln of 1 over 3 is equal to ln of e to the power of minus 0.0719t. So that I can write it as ln 1 over 3 is equal to minus 0.0719t ln e. So let's see what ln of 1 over 3 is. So that's equal to minus 1.0 9861289 and we know that ln of v is just 1 so that means on the right hand side we just get minus 0.0719t and now dividing both sides by minus 0.0719 we get t is equal to 15.2797.2585 correct to one decimal place t is equal to 15.3 
So that's your answer for B part two. And now we're going to move on to the final part of the question, B part three. And this is also worth 10 marks. So we're told that the light has passed through a filter of thickness, 10 centimeters. And then we have to find the percentage reduction in its intensity. And we have to give our answer correct to one decimal place. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the percentage that was kept and then take that away from 100%. And then whatever we're left with will be the percentage reduction. So to find the percentage kept, we put the new intensity over the original intensity and multiply our answer by 100. I'm going to put this on the screen now to help you visualize it. So remember the new intensity is represented by IT and the original is I0. So we have our law IT is equal to I0 times by E to the power of minus KT. So now let's fill in K and we know that T is equal to 10 from up here. So that's IT is equal to I0 times by E to the power of minus 0 0.719 times by 10. So we can divide both sides by I0 which will give us IT over I0 on the left hand side and we'll get rid of the I0 on the right hand side. And then minus 0 0.0719 by 10 is just minus 0 0.719. And if you look at this, that's equal to the percentage kept new intensity over original intensity. As, as I said, the new intensity is IT. That's over the original intensity I0. So that means that this is going to be equal to this. So we just multiply the e to the power of minus 0 0.719 by 100. And then this will give us the percentage kept. So let's see what that is now. So there was 48.72392517% remaining. However, as I said, we wanted to find how much was reduced. So we're going to take that away from 100 and see what we get. So 100% minus 48.7% is equal to 51.3%. So therefore, the percentage reduction is 51.3%. And that's our answer for B part three of the question, which is the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.